Welcome to this video series designed to help dairy producers learn more about antibiotic resistance and new laws related to antibiotic use in livestock. In this first video, we'll discuss what antibiotic resistance is and what causes it. In the second video, we'll cover why producers should care about slowing the spread of antibiotic resistance. In the third video, we'll outline what good antibiotic stewardship looks like on a farm and how producers can both minimize disease and reduce treatment costs. And in the last video, we'll review new state and federal regulations regarding livestock medications. We'll start by clarifying some terminology. When discussing antibiotics, livestock producers sometimes confuse the terms antimicrobial residues with antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic residues are the chemical residues left in the tissues and milk following treatment of livestock with antibiotics. Antibiotic resistance, on the other hand, is the ability that some bacterial strains have developed to survive in the presence of antibiotics. Today, we'll discuss only antibiotic resistance. Some background on bacteria is also helpful. It's useful to remember that bacteria are all around us, on the tools we use and in the food we eat. We actually may have as many normal protective bacteria on our skin and in our GI tract as we have human cells. And bacteria have been around a lot longer than we have. Bacterial fossils found in Northwest Australia are some 3.5 billion years old, formed just 1 billion years after the Earth was created. Over those billions of years, microorganisms have competed against each other for dominance. A sort of chemical arms race developed, with some microorganisms developing chemical weapons, or what we now know as antibiotics, to attack their neighbors in an effort to eliminate the competition. In response, other microbes develop defenses against these compounds, becoming what we refer to as antibiotic resistant. We have found strains of bacteria in the caves undisturbed by humans, in the remains of woolly mammoths, and even in Peruvian mummies, that developed antibiotic resistance thousands or even millions of years before antibiotics were discovered or used by mankind. In spite of the fact that microbes have been producing antibiotics for millions of years, humans haven't recognized or used them until recently. Alexander Fleming first described the action of an antibiotic, penicillin, in 1929, but it wasn't until World War II that we saw the first large-scale production of penicillin and its use in hospitals. Antibiotics were first used to treat infections in animals in the 1940s. And finally, in 1951, the first patents were filed for the use of antibiotics in feed to treat disease and increase weight gain. Bacteria can develop resistance to antibiotics in hundreds of different ways. One of the most important resistance strategies is to evolve a change in its structure that makes it more difficult for an antibiotic to bind to or enter the bacteria. Some bacteria will develop enzymes to destroy an antibiotic if it does gain access into the cell. And finally, another common mechanism is for bacteria to develop special proteins to pump an antibiotic out of the cell. Importantly, DNA coding for these different resistance mechanisms can be passed directly from one bacteria to another. This allows transfer of various resistance mechanisms and can occur even between very different types of bacteria, such as between staph, strep, and E. coli. In the presence of an antibiotic, bacteria that cannot survive the effect of an antibiotic will die, while those that are resistant to it will survive, thrive, and outcompete the remaining bacteria. So what does antibiotic resistance look like in a laboratory? This is a time-lapse photography spending 25 hours of a petri dish seeded with staph bacteria. Over time, the growth of bacterial cells is impeded as they come in contact with antibiotics leaching out of these specially prepared paper discs. Eventually, you can see this strain of bacteria is sensitive to all but one of the antibiotics. Here we see two different types of bacteria growing out onto petri dishes, the plate on the left demonstrates that bacterial growth has been inhibited by each of the different types of antibiotics. Conversely, on the right, bacterial growth has remained virtually unchecked, even in the presence of a variety of different types of antibiotics. While not every treatment will result in antibiotic resistance, the greater the use of antibiotics, the greater the risk that an antibiotic-resistant bacteria will eventually emerge. As the use and presence of antibiotics in animals, in people, and in the environment increases, the risk of antibiotic resistance spreading also increases. This concludes our first video. In the next video in this series, we will discuss the issue of why antibiotic resistance is important to dairy producers.